this video, I'm gonna talk about the fate of the Lexus IS350 and kind of go over everything I've done to it. Hello everybody and welcome back to Marty Motoring. So I did mention a couple of months ago that I decided on selling this car this year in 2020. There are a few things holding me back from doing that right at this moment, but it will be for sale soon. Uh, one of those things is that most of the notaries in my area in Pennsylvania are closed and I can't transfer a title or anything over to somebody. So once all of this craziness is over, I should be able to sell it, but for right now, I can't. There's one more thing I need to do to this car, and that is fix the ABS issue. I got a different computer, so I need to install Toyota TechStream on there again, as I've done in my previous videos. I can check the codes for the ABS light and then be able to fix that and then sell it to a new owner without any issues. So those are really the two big things. The ABS light also trips the VSC and it just looks really bad for anybody trying to buy it. You don't wanna buy a car with lights on the dash. So what I'm gonna do is fix all that and I'm gonna do it the right way so that there's no problems in the future. In the past, I did replace the ABS sensor and that didn't work. But with that stuff aside, let's check out the car. I do wanna state the reason I'm selling this car is because I'd really like to get a house and the savings from this, plus just having the 4Runner as a practical uh, vehicle will let me save a little bit more to buy a house, but don't worry, I don't wanna leave the Lexus family. I do love this car and I've had a great three, almost three years with it. It does have an aftermarket extended warranty on it as well that can be transferred. So there's some value in this and that's why I probably will be selling it for about 7,500, but let's dive in and see why that price is what it is. So it's pretty dirty and it's on right now because I wanted to show you the daytime running lights of the VLANs. I haven't driven this in probably like a week. I've been driving the 4Runner a lot just with everywhere I've been going. I didn't want to put more miles on this car. I want to keep it as nice as possible. So I really enjoyed this car. The last three years, it's really helped build my channel. Let's start with the interior and then we can turn it off here because I don't like to leave it sit idling. We do have a DCT MS. I think it's DCT Motorsports. Um, a flat bottom steering wheel. It's just the regular leather. We have 183,335 miles. Um, now that is higher, but if you watch this channel, you know I maintain this vehicle. Oil changes every three to 4,000 miles with full synthetic Mobile One, Castrol, and re more recently I switched over to Pennzoil Platinum, and it runs awesome. As you can hear, it's purring away. Now you can see what I mean. Traction control is disabled. Uh, you have the VSC light on, and then as well as the ABS light on, all because there's one ABS code that's, so when, anytime you have a code, the VSC gets tripped, and, it, and anytime you have an ABS light, I believe, or it's the VSC, one of those, the traction control gets turned off. So it's driving fine, it's just ABS is not enabled. I know some people just drive with ABS off all the time anyway, and they want that. Uh, for slides and things like that. The interior overall is very good condition. I have a little phone mount that's magnetic here. Uh, everything works, touchscreen works, which I know some people had a problem with the touchscreen and they had to have them replaced on some models. This is not chewed up, everything works nicely. As of 2018, brand new dash, brand new door panels. Um, I submitted that in 2017 and the 2000, in 2018 they replaced it. I did recently get it inspected, Pennsylvania inspected as of April 2020. So it's gonna be good for a whole nother year for Pennsylvania inspection till 2021. I have the F Sport knob, but I have the brushed aluminum vivid vinyl wrap on here and uh, it's held up good over the last couple of years. Same thing with on the door panels. And this is the luxury package, so you get the, the adjustable steering wheel, electronic, and you get the seat memory settings. As far as the back seats go, not really much is here. I mean, it's I haven't used them much. Uh, they are in really good condition. The previous owner did install a Lexus logo, looks like a vinyl, with uh, a red bulb, which I just never changed. Um, so that, I might change to white before selling, just because I changed the front ones and they're white and they look really good. Also, everything with the sunroof works and doesn't leak, so that's awesome. I do have the windows tinted 20%, so it's a little dark. Um, it's not technically legal in some states, but it's a nice dark reflection, and you can actually still see through with light. Also, I have these window visors that I got off eBay that just kind of go with the chrome and then add a little bit of shaded venting for uh, wind and rain, which is nice. I have these blind spot mirrors, which helps with backing up and parking. So you can see the reverse camera works. 
and I'm crooked, oh well. Then I have a top vinyl bar here, kind of like an eyebrow on the windshield. The sunroof is not tinted, that's just factory. You have the factory shark fin for the navigation stuff. And then this uh, dirty spoiler king, it's kind of like a polyurethane. You mold it to fit and it sticks on. I really recommend it. Uh, it looks really good. I really like it. Um, they had sent that to me. It really adds to the car, so that'll be coming with it. Also, I apologize, this is so dirty. It's been sitting for a little bit, but I mean, that's, that's just dirt. It's nothing wrong with the paint. I have the Icon Motorsports rear trunk spoiler. It's kind of like the ducktail a little bit with a aftermarket badge that just fit in there better because the factory one, they're just, you can see the 3M and everything like that. So this fit a lot better and that is all 3 m on there and it hasn't come off. And I should say, I'll probably have this for about another month by the time everything opens back up. I fix the ABS, I list it, find a buyer, I sell it. It's gonna take a while and I don't mind. Uh, I mean, I'll make some videos on it as much as I can along this process and that's why I started making this one. I wanna show you and bring you along on the journey and uh, hopefully you'll watch some of my Forerunner videos and my mini bike videos. Um, I still wanna do Lexus stuff so uh, if you're here for Lexus stuff, don't worry. I, I want to do more. I'm not abandoning it. Uh, I just won't have this car. But I would like to get something in the future. And some other people ask me what's next. Like I said, Forerunner and a house. Uh, I have the Forerunner already. I want to get a house and then I'll actually have the space, the garage space and everything to do videos anytime and get another Lexus, hopefully in the future, and be able to mod it and store it in a nice garage. So that's the plan. This is just the move I have to make right now. Um, I don't hate this car or anything, and I'm still here as a resource in the Lexus community, so don't forget about me. Moving on, we have tinted rear reflectors. I think I got those on eBay. And then we have the factory exhaust with the factory exhaust tips. Nothing special there. These are the V-Land LED taillights. I've done a video on all this stuff, so you've probably seen this before. But if you're new to the channel, um, all these links will be in the description. A lot of them are Amazon links. The Option Lab wheels. I was partially sponsored with these back in 20, early 2018, and they are still great two years later. Um, they're a little dirty right now, but I have 18 by 9.5 with a 35 offset in the rear and 18 by 8.5 35 offset in the front. So it's a really good staggered setup running 245 40s and 225 40s. So almost factory tire size. They were a little stretched because I was lowered on H&R springs, but now I'm on new factory suspension. You can see how high it is pretty high back to stock suspension height because some people buying this just won't want it lowered and um, this actually rides a little bit smoother than lowering springs and I didn't want to spend a grand on coilovers for a car I'm going to sell so I got factory suspension factory springs and put it on and it rides great also I did want to mention although they are a little dirty Achilles ATR Sport 2 I have those tires on here and yeah, they're Chinese made. They're not the best tires, but they've actually been really good to me. Uh, good traction and wet and dry. They're all season, so you can run them everywhere. And they're only like $300 a set. I would have bought really good name brand tires, but I didn't. So <laughs> here they are, Achilles ATR Sport 2. I have had zero issues with them. Moving back to the front, this is where a lot of stuff is happening and I wanted to focus on a little bit. We have the Magic Drift and Icon Motorsports actually makes this too. Um, it's the JDM PM, I wanna say. It's the, it's just like the style of lip. It clips into the factory bumper and it looks really good and just gives it a nice hard line. Fog light housings are stock, but they have ox beam LEDs inside. And not too long ago, I did a video on these VLAN headlights, how to install them. They work great, they look great triple beam LED, you have the high beam, and then the low beam, and then you have the DRL, daytime running light, looks awesome. As for the grill, I also did a video on this. This surround I found on eBay for about 70 bucks, it's plastic, already painted, like black plastic, but this is available from multiple sellers, uh, Icon Motorsports, I think Armadillo makes one, I'll have links in the description below, and then I just used my factory emblem and 3M did on there. So those little touches make this car really unique. The hood is actually wrapped black. At the time it was winter and I didn't, I don't really know how to detail cars and I need to find somebody that could fix it. But the one guy I did talk to said it looks like clear coat 
is starting to fade in one very small spot. So I just wanted to protect it for now by putting the wrap on it. Um, of course, this could be removed and repainted, but the wrap actually makes it look really good and blends in. You can't tell. Um, so that's that's something I did with the stock hood. I used to have a carbon fiber hood, but it had a crack in the clear and uh, actually sold it to somebody with an IS-250. And um, I mean, they were going for a different look. I just wanted to go back to the functionality of the stock hood. It, it's not that much heavier than the carbon fiber hood. So as far as performance goes, it wasn't really worth it for me to have all these different hoods laying around. I just wanted the factory one with the great fitment. Like I said, the fitment on that carbon fiber one, it was a Cybon carbon fiber hood, wasn't 100%, unfortunately. And I just wanted to maintain that OEM functionality, especially for when I went to sell this thing, which is what I'm planning to do very soon. Under the hood, it's a little dirty, but I have my engine covers back on. I had to replace the radiator cap. The alternator's been replaced. I have the F-Sport box still, but I have the stock intake back on. I did have to order this part new when I sold the RR Racing intake. The RR Racing intake I had didn't have this line, it just had a breather here. So I had to buy this hose directly from Lexus. So now everything's factory how it should be. I haven't noticed any performance increases or decreases. It works just the same, works great. The thermostat was replaced along with the radiator cap, I should add. Um, it started to get closer to the overheating sign about a year ago, and I flushed all the coolant, replaced the thermostat, and replaced the radiator cap, and everything's been fine since then. It can sit and idle and not overheat. I've done spark plugs. I did the battery when I first got it. I've replaced fuses. Um, it has the F-Sport air filter in that F-Sport box. Really the only thing to figure out with this is what's causing the ABS issue. Um, I've heard it could be like sensors like these that I might just need to replace and that's pretty easy. So we're going to figure that out before I sell it. But like I said, everything's been maintained. Moving on to the trunk. <laughs> I have the uh, stock headlights, which I just had in here. I'm not sure if I'm going to sell these separately. Put a comment below if you are interested. Uh, we can hook something up if you really want the stock ones. But I'll probably include them with the car. If not, I also have the stock tail lights that can easily be swapped be swap with these. I wanted to leave the VLAN lights and the Option Lab wheels with the car just because it makes it look really good and who wouldn't want to buy a good looking car. Really in the trunk, nothing's changed. I still have the factory Lexus first aid kit. I installed this light bar with my friend Freddy over at Poor Man Mods and it has a controller where you can like change the different colors of the light. I like white though so when I open my trunk it goes on white and then when I close it it goes off. It's an RGB so you can change it to whatever color you like but it's pretty cool. Really lights up the trunk. Um, I'll have a link for that in the description as well from his website. He makes some cool little innovative products and that was one I really enjoyed. The things I've replaced on this car, there's a factory plastic splash shield underneath and the wheel wells. Um, I have all new ones on there. And like I said, the exhaust is back to stock. So that's an overview of my Lexus IS350. Pretty much with everything I've done over the last three years, minus some of the mods to where it sits now. And you heard the reasons why I'm selling it. I wanna pass this fun on to somebody else and kinda of conquer some of my other goals in the meantime, but I will be back to Lexus, I know it. I know I will be. Whether it's a project car or an uh, RCF, ISF, GSF, one of those cars, or just um, you know maybe an IS300 manual, something fun. I'm still kind of in the Lexus family. I have the Toyota 4Runner and I love that thing. It looks awesome, it drives awesome, it can go anywhere and do anything. Uh, and it's a super reliable, tough vehicle, very practical. I uh, really can't complain about it and I'm continuing to do YouTube making videos on that. I think it should work out pretty good. That's the plan for 2020. Drop in the comments what you think of this build. Would you buy it? Are you interested in buying it? Are you sad to see it go? So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching and as always, keep those wheels turning.